Hello friends. So today let us start the course on induction machine. Okay. So we have concluded transformers and induction machine is a very, very similar device as compared to the transformers. Okay. Uh, we people usually call the induction machine as a rotating transformer. Also. Therefore, if you have understood the course of transformers, induction motors is a very, very simple device. Okay. Other than this, what I want to tell you is that we have already covered the concepts of AC machinery fundamentals in which we have covered concepts like rotating magnetic field. So I would recommend that uh, you before starting this course, go to the playlist search for uh, AC machinery fundamentals in my channel. You will find a full course on AC machinery fundamentals which deals with fundamentals of AC machines. Okay, so it would be better that you do that course and then come back to this course. Okay, induction ma machines usually we can uh, uh, we will be covering two areas here. One is induction motors. Okay, the other is induction generators. Okay, why it is called induction machine, we will uh, see in the uh, end of this video. So basically, uh, most of the course will be regarding induction motors and uh, induction generators have very limited application. Therefore, induction motors are going to be the major chunk of this course. Why induction motors are very popular? Okay, they, if you are an electrical engineer, if you go to an industry, uh, why go to an industry, even in your home, the pump set motor is usually a single phase induction motor. Okay, If you work in an industry, you will see that the motors which drive compressors, compressor pistons is usually induction motor. Induction motors are spread throughout the industry. There are a couple of uh, good reasons for that. The first thing here is that the induction motor is a very simple device. It has a very simple construction. The next thing is that it is a very rugged device. Okay, rugged device in the sense, it is like a fit and forget type of machine. That means it requires a very less maintenance and this is something which industry loves, things which have very less maintenance. It is very simple. It is Why it is simple, why it is rugged, we will be seeing in the course. Okay, and it's a very rugged construction and the major, one of the major point here is that it is a very low priced motor. If you compare the for the similar HP with the synchronous motor or a DC motor, the induction motor is very, very low price. It's very compact also. That is why induction motor has come to our homes. The important thing here, another thing is that it is very easy to maintain. It's just very easy to maintain. And these four characteristics, the industry loves. The industry loves all these four characteristics. Now, how come this induction motor became so famous? We should all thank here Mr. Nikola Tesla. I'm sure that you've heard about him. He was the one who theoretically and practically made the first induction motor. The concept was developed by him. You know that there was a war of currents between Thomas Alva Edison and Nikola Tesla, right? Nikola Tesla was the on the AC side and the uh, Thomas Alva Edison was on the DC side. Now, AC could only win if there was a device which could run on AC and that device had to be very simple, very rugged, very efficient, low priced and easy to maintain. And that type of device Tesla invented, which is the induction motor. As you learn the course, the induction motor's beauty of operation, you will be able to appreciate. Okay, so we can all thank Nikola Tesla. And due to this device, AC became popular. And in our wall sockets, we are getting AC rather than DC because induction motor made that possible that we were induction motor can only work with ac and therefore once tesla invented the induction motor people naturally went towards ac people and industry now just like any motor the induction motor also has two principal components okay the induction motor has two principal components okay so one is called the stator okay just like the name suggests it is the stationary structure and the next is the rotor okay which is the rotating structure rotating structure and uh, to rotate properly you know that there should be a gap between the stator and the rotor <laughs> otherwise the rotor will go and hit the stator right so this air gap which is present within the induction motor is very very small it is usually from 0.4 mm to 4 mm so people devise uh, decide this uh, value depending upon the power requirements of the application okay that is how these people design the designers make a option from 0.4 mm to 4 mm. So that it is a very small air gap which you find in the induction motor. Okay. So now let us see what is the basic stator structure. Okay. All these explanations will be very basic in this video because in the future videos, we will be going all through all these things in depth as we learn the concepts. Okay. So basically what is the stator structure? 
what it contains is that it consists of a steel frame steel in the sense electrical steel here okay consists of a steel frame just like a transformer okay now this steel frame is laminated laminated structure okay and then holes are punched holes are punched why are holes punched so that we can wire the induction motor okay holes are punched to support the stator windings support the stator windings okay so these are very basic things personally explaining this construction features of the uh, any device is a little bit boring thing so i will just uh, conclude it very fast okay so it consists of uh, holes which are punched to support the stator winding so this punching are made in such a way that you are having evenly spaced slots okay so it's not that one slot is somewhere and other slot is somewhere this is evenly spaced slots okay so now we will see what is the basic structure here okay now this is the basic stator constructional stages okay so we are seeing the basic uh, level of construction stages of construction so you have a thin sheet of uh, laminated electrical steel then one single hole is punched out and everything is brought into shape you can see that the holes are being evenly punched out here see holes are evenly punched out and then the entire uh, hole is uh, again punched out in from this section here so that you get a proper stator structure you can clearly see that in this area you can house the stator windings now this uh, slots uh, structure itself takes a entire video that we will see some other time uh, when we are uh, getting used to the concept okay so this is the basic method of construction of the stator structure now this is one lamination okay like this you will have a lot of lamination and everything is brought together and uh, riveted together to get a final stator structure okay so this is just one lamination and there is a collection of laminations which together become the stator structure okay so that is the basic idea of the stator so now let us see what is the rotor now one type of rotor which you will see is very similar to the stator structure okay so in that also what you are having is that you are having punched laminations punched laminations that are stacked together stacked together and those uh, windings and those uh, punchings will have the to hold the rotor windings hold the rotor windings okay why i am going so leisurely and very uh in not a very depth manner is because all these concepts will keep on coming when we are discussing about the machine as we are just doing an overview here okay so based on this the rotor windings basically you can divide it into two one is the conventional three phase winding conventional three phase winding okay and the other one is the squirrel cage structure squirrel cage structure now when you have the rotor which is very similar to the stator like this punched laminations etc there you use the conventional three phase winding i have already told you what is the definition of three phase winding if you have not seen go and see the ac machinery fundamental video once again okay so this is the conventional three phase winding the problem here is that you are having the slip ring brush concept and once you have this brushes involved in any machines you will have the wear and tear of machine and the maintenance of this machine becomes a small issue whereas squirrel cage is the major function uh, area of induction motors it is a very rugged structure and it is like a fit and forget type of machine okay so we'll just see uh, basically how this squirrel cage is made okay so what is what basically the squirrel cage uh, structure means is that you are having rotor bars solid bars inserted into the rotor slots inserted into the rotor slots okay and these rotor bars are slightly longer than the rotor itself slightly longer than the rotor itself than the rotor itself okay and what do these people do is that they use end rings to short out the both ends to short out both ends of the rotor of the rotor so why do they short is because once the induction process happens you need the uh, current to circulate so if both the ends are open the current won't circulate therefore uh, once the induction process etc begins and once the rotor needs a current circulation you have to short the bars so now let's just see the constructional uh, method in which rotor windings are constructed so that you can have a little bit better idea so here you see you are having a uh, vessel here in which molten aluminum is poured and here is the rotor molding okay so here is the rotor molding here in which the rotor structure is going to get fabricated 
so what do the people do here you are having a piston which can push this thing downwards okay so this will come downwards so when you put compress there this comes downwards and a huge force is exerted so what happens is this molten aluminum enters the mold okay and it is left for curing for some time and once you remove the structure it looks like this okay it looks like this and in this area in these gaps you can insert the rotor bars and after inserting the rotor bars what do they do they get a structure like this right so for example this is the approximate rotor structure okay okay so this is the basic rotor structure so here people insert the rotor bars like this okay they insert the rotor bars and you are having these free ends right like this you are having these free ends so here they will put an end ring so that this entire winding is shorted out like this okay now my diagram does not uh, represent it but the real rotor structure looks like a squirrel cage okay you might have seen in cartoons etc a structure like this in which a squirrel runs and this entire thing rotates okay so this entire structure of the copper bars okay and the end rings okay so the rotor bars rotor bars and the end rings looks like a squirrel cage looks like a squirrel cage and that is why it is called a squirrel cage type of construction okay now you can see one interesting point here in a synchronous machine okay you are giving ac excitation to the stator right ac excitation is given to the stator and the dc excitation was given to the rotor dc excitation is given to the rotor right but in an induction machine only the ac excitation is given to the stator okay so where does the rotor get its excitation from okay so the rotor gets its excitation from the stator via the process of induction okay so just like a transformer so for example we have already seen this is a transformer you are having your primary windings like this and then you are having your secondary windings like this right so you supply power here electrical power and via induction the power transfers to the secondary and you get an output voltage across the secondary similarly in induction motor you are having a stator structure which holds three phase windings how how these things happen we will see in another video maybe the next video and this you are having the rotor structure so the power is transferred from the stator to the rotor through this air gap via induction here there was no air gap we made a core so that all the flux is linked with the core here you are having this air gap so there are some kinds uh, things which will electrically change as compared to the transformer as well as the induction so here from stator to rotor the power is transferred via induction that is the most important point of an induction motor okay so because you are only giving supply to the stator end the induction motor is a singly excited device it is a singly excited device which means you are giving only one excitation whereas in a synchronous motor you are having two excitations right one is the ac excitation the other is the dc excitation for the rotor so this is a doubly excited machine doubly excited machine synchronous motor doubly excited transformer and induction motor are singly excited okay so let us conclude this video today in the next video we will start with how the torque production happens in a induction motor okay so with this we will be starting the working principle of the induction motor again i am telling you please go and watch the ac machinery fundamentals videos to understand the concept of the rotating magnetic field before watching the next video okay so let's conclude today's video i thank you for watching and have a great day thank you now that the video is over please stay with me for 30 more seconds now the vision of this channel is to create a repository of good quality videos with crystal clear explanation regarding various topics related to electrical engineering now if you want to help me spread the word please share this video with anyone interested in these topics the second thing is that for me education is a two way process therefore if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding any of the videos or regarding the channel please put them in the comments below we can have a healthy discussion and that way we can build a strong community of electrical engineers so that's it for today's video so till i see you in the next time it's me varun signing off and have a great day thank you